Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are definitely back. Yes, sir. Another classic conversation with yours truly. We're saying that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I am your host, Glenn Poo Harding. No oh boy, we have a very, very special guest. But I want to give a big shout out to my guy Larry over at NFHS for giving me such a huge shout out on a platform yesterday. It means a lot. But right now, we have a legend in the building. This basketball head is a New York City legendary host of High School Weekly, where he showcased and covered the top basketball players of that era. Now, I'm not sure whether it was called High School Basketball Weekly or High School Weekly, but we're going to get right to it because y'all know me and my guy, Brian Reinkert, we host the High School Basketball Weekly, and that's in honor of our next guest for sure. This basketball head was the original of everything you guys see me doing today. He is the go-to. He is the blueprint for that style. If there's somewhere in the broadcasting world I always wanted to get on the show, he is it. He has interviewed and covered so many players. We will be here all night running down the list. I, I really mean that. My camera's going haywire for some reason, but we're back in action. Now, you can catch him on ESPN Radio covering high school football. And we're going to get into that as well. We got that straight? Because we've been having a lot of technical difficulties tonight. But we're going to get it right. This guy meant so much to me, I had to reach out to my legendary high school coach with all the connections for him to make that happen. So I'd like to give a huge shout out to my coach, mentor, Bobby Hartstein. Thank you, coach, for making this happen. So without further ado, help me welcome to the show, legendary host of High School Weekly, the one and only Mike Quick. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped out into, into the world, world of, of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on, come on. Go hard. 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 Go home. Never back down. You gotta hold your own. Go hard. 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 Go Hey, Mike, how you doing, brother? Hey, Pooh, that's some open you have there, partner. I love man, it. Man, man, listen, we, we just trying to get it right, brother. We just trying to get it right. You know, with... <laughs> but Glenn, I apologize. You can see what a technical disaster I am. All those years doing the show, you have all these people behind you. If it wasn't for Jackie, we're not even together tonight, you and I. Oh, my God, I'm all over the house trying to get a Wi-Fi line. We had to go to the phone. But it's great to see you. It was great to see you up at Rose Hill earlier today for the granddaddy, the Catholic championship. So let's let it rip, man. Let's have some fun. Oh, yeah. I want to give a big shout out to Jackie for making it happen. And <laughs> like I always say, without strong women behind these men, this would have never happened. <laughs> hey, to you, by, Jackie. by the way, 
this way, and I heard you great shout out to Coach Hartstein. You know how I feel about him. When I started doing this a while back, he was one of the guys that welcomed me in there, made me feel good, made me feel comfortable because there was no roadmap. There was no blueprint. We kind of just went in and, you know, if people trusted you, if people believed you, they let you back into their gyms on the fields. And that's how you started building it through relationships and trust. And I appreciate what you said, buddy, because, uh, you know, back in the day, there was no internet. There was nope. no Wi-Fi. There was none of that. There was us. The daily, right. I mean, think about it back in the day, Glenn. The Daily News had six high school beat writers. Six. Six. You can't find anything in the Daily News anymore. Nothing. Nothing. It's a shame how when things are supposed to get better, there's less and less. So... I don't know. You know, it's funny when you did it back in the day, you kind of hope people liked it. And as I get older and you walk into places and I, I think when I read, there was two moments when I realized how important this was for guys like you and all the other guys coming up. I saw Andre Barrett about three or four years ago up at Mount St. Michael's, one of those big weekend shindigs they had. I don't think I watched one of the games. He and I just talked. I hadn't seen him since he went off to Seton Hall. And he said when he was a freshman at Rice High School and he got on that show at 1030 on a Tuesday night, he said he felt like he made it. And I was like, wow. You know, and it's like and then when I went to the Felipe premiere, the Dominican Dream, and you saw all the guys in there and they're like, wow, it's all oh, it's great. You're here being on that show. So it's funny. The older you get, I think the more I appreciate what that show meant to people. I, I really do. And it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. It, it meant so much to us. You you have no idea. Like Kenny Anderson wanted to send you some love. He said, tell Mike, I love him. <laughs> I do too. I love right? him. Uh, spoke yeah. to Elma Anderson. Elma Anderson oh. was like, Mike used to make my grandmother so proud because he used to give a shout out to my grandmother every time uh -huh. he covered me. Rob we like Phelps. to do that. You know, you know what it what we yeah. did when people would tell me about their mom, their dad, their grandparents, their aunts and uncles. We try to throw one in there every once in a while because we, you know, what we tried to do. We tried to make the show like the local barber shop, the local hardware store, the local pizza place, the local hot dog stand. We weren't Home Depot. We were your neighborhood place to watch the kids from the neighborhood. And we always tried to incorporate everybody. That's why when we did those features, we'd want to get the parents in there. Um, it, it was it was really important to us. It was a family show, and 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 it wasn't easy to do, but we had a lot of fun doing it, and we worked hard at it. As I had a great team around me, a phenomenal team. Listen, I, what I wanted to do uh, was give kids opportunity to have that same experience because it was frustrating for me because you know I've been away from the game for a long time, and, and I just came back. Uh, during the pandemic. Uh, my friends was, you know, always telling me that I should do a basketball show. And I was like, they still covered in the paper. And it was like, no, no, they're not. And I didn't believe them. I know. So I would, you know, look in the paper because I stopped buying the newspaper because mm -hmm. I wasn't interested yep. and read about anything uh, that had to do with basketball. And for a month straight during the best high school basketball season, I saw that there was nothing of any kind about any high school basketball in New York City. And that was kind of frustrating knowing that we have all this technology yep. and kids are not being covered. No, it's crazy, right? It's just, it's just nuts. Hey, I'll tell you what's nuts. How in the world? How in the world? Let me get, I got to jump into this because when I was leaving Rose Hill today, I'm telling everybody, number five for Stepanak better be on this post-tournament uh, post team, right? Because Hassan uh, Caressi today, yeah. to me, I know Boogie Flan was the MVP. You know, Stepanak won the thing for the second year in a row. Congratulations to Coach Masseroni and the Crusaders. But Stepanak won today because of the sophomore, Hassan Caressi, who was terrific. I thought he was the best player on the field, on the field, on the court today. 17 points. What, 15 points, seven rebounds, two steals, two assists, and two block shots. You were there, Pooh. Yo, listen, he 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 had the and he had the old school game because it was no mostly mid-range. No doubt. Poised. He made one mistake, 336 left in the fourth. Yeah. He traveled. 
Masseroni lit him up on the other end of the floor. Did you see what he did? He had the steal, the push up the floor, easy laying. Next time down the floor, he had another steal. I thought he was flat out sensational. I think it's a sin, a sin that he wasn't on the all tournament team. I did not see the semifinals. I don't care. In the biggest <gasps> game of the moment, that kid, number five, the sophomore, was the best player on the floor today. He was. Better than Boogie Flan today. Boogie, give him credit, started out rough in the 66-51 victory over Nazareth. Good job by Gary Irving, the former Robeson star. What a coach he has become after that great career overseas. I mean, you can see he coached. He remind. Yeah, I'm going to throw one at you, Pooh. You know who Gary reminds me a little bit of when he coaches on the sidelines? Shaheen Holloway. He gets into it. He coaches like he's playing, and I like that. But number five was the best player on the floor today. No yeah. doubt. They don't win without him. Give Boogie credit. Terrible first half. One of seven. I mean, he took two shots that I don't shoot that bad. You saw him. Yeah. Just like, whoa. But he settled in in the second half. Great timeout by Masseroni. 336, third quarter. Zavarian, Zavarian, Nazareth cut it to 36, 35. Timeout. Boogie comes out to the basket. Uh, then who else? And I saw Pacora there today. He was all pumped up about uh, Ritvo. 11.5 rebounds. He had that, you know, coast-to-coast -coast laying yep. foul, old-fashioned three. And then Boogie again, off they go, 20-4 to four run, ball game. I got to be honest. I did not think the crowd would be, would be as good as it was when Nazareth beat St. Raymond's Wednesday night. And the crowd ended. It was almost like the St. John's Georgetown crowd yesterday at the Garden. Late arriving crowd, almost to capacity when it was done. So that there was a lot of atmosphere up there today at Rose Hill. I, I'm glad that you said the, the Rip Vomu was an old school play. Because I said the same thing. The layup, right? It, yep. was, layup. it was like a, a Julius Irving, yes. George Gerving finger roll and a three-point play, which was awesome. Yeah, he did that at the, let's see. Yeah, the circus laying in foul, made it 41-35, 3-0-1 left. They were on a 5-0 run then, went on a 6-0 run out of the timeout, and that was kind of the ball game right there. And it was right in front of his future head coach, Tommy Pacora. Shout out to Tommy, first year at Quinnipiac. They just yes. won the regular season MAC title. So it was good to see him and Coach Warson there. Good to see Ray Nash back and feeling healthy on the sideline. So that was good. It was, uh, I don't want to say it was old school because nothing was like back in the days. I, Gary DeCesar sent me, the old St. Ray's coach the other day, sent me a copy of the 91 game that we did on MSG Network, St. Ray's, Bishop Lachlan. It's like the starting lineup. It's like, and your starters for St. Raymond. It's like, bam, bam, bam. It's like, and that's what, 23 years ago? I remember it like it was yesterday against Bobby Leckie's Bishop Lachlan team, Andre Riddick. It was uh, Rose Hill. You couldn't, you could, like, there was just bodies everywhere. And I don't think, and I'll say it, people are going to get mad. I don't care. I'm old. Who doesn't matter? All right. Basketball today is not close to what it used to be. It's not. It's not. It's not. Y'all heard it. The legend said it. <laughs> because <laughs> when I said it's like, you know, uh, no, he's, you know, being the old guy. Trust me, I was in the fire. I know what it's like. I was there, and, and I'm covering it now, and it's so different. What gave me that feeling was yesterday out in Long Island, the Long Island Championships. Mm -hmm. I was out there at uh, Farmingdale uh, State College, mm -hmm. and the atmosphere was an awesome, awesome atmosphere. Two back-to-back -back buzzer beaters. Two back-to-back -back buzzer beaters. Mm -hmm. You, and, and of course, you know, uh, we had one blowout. But I, I can live with that. Two back-to-back -back buzzer beaters and the blowout. Oh, is, Bay, is Bayshore that good blowing out Darius's Baldwin team? Are they that good or is Baldwin just – I know they weren't supposed to be there this year, so they kind of overachieved. Is Bayshore that good? Bayshore is really good. Bayshore is really good. I would like to see how they fare against some teams in the city. Well, we'll find – I mean – so Mount Vernon won what yesterday or today? So who did who does Bayshore play? Did, did, did Mount Vernon win or did they lose against Kingston? Oh wait a minute, I might have read an old article. <laughs> yeah, they they lost they lost against Kingston. They I think. lost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. I, I want to get the coach on the high school basketball weekly show so we can see if we can set up something next year because they were both team were coach very well. Mm-hmm. I just think uh, Baldwin didn't have that much firepower to compete with them. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what, and Long Island always has. Listen, their they're basketball, take Long Island Lutheran out of the mix. Right, right, uh, right. Congratulations to Chaminade. Danny Feeney winning the Class A championship in double overtime against St. Mary's from up there in the Lancaster Buffalo region. Uh, but Long I- what Long Island does a really good job of, their basketball is not as close to the stuff that we see a lot, but they do get great crowds. Yes. When they get to that postseason stuff, it's a different animal out there on Long Island. They love to come out and support their schools and their teams and their friends. It's really cool to see. Always has been. Always has been. And it's very rival-oriented because when yeah. you step in the gym, they're like, Friends Academy this side, mm-hmm. Southampton this side. Yeah. You know. No, so. it's good. Hey, you know what I liked about today, too, is that they hadn't played this year each other. No. And uh, and Stepanek. I thought that was good. That doesn't happen a lot in the Catholic League final. And I thought I thought that was I thought that was really good. You know who I thought played well, too, early on in the game? Kind of might go overlooked. I thought number 21, uh, Jordan Gabriel, I thought he did a good job early on in the game establishing the fact that Nazareth was not going to get to the basket easily in this game. And, uh, you know, it's not going to show up a lot in the box score, but I thought he made his presence felt early that this is my house down here and kind of kind of stay out of there. But give Nazareth credit. That 13-4 run to make it a one-point game, they weren't going to go away first time there, and uh, it was uh, it was fun. And and I got to be honest though, you know, it was a bla- I went up there Friday night. I went up there to watch McClancy in the A State semifinal. They lost to Timmin, and then a huge shout out to Kevin Cullen and Regis. Let me tell you something: that Regis team is phenomenal, and there is nobody. Pooh, I'm going to tell you this right now: not Stepanek. Not Iona, not Cardinal Hayes, not Severian, Malloy, St. Francis. There is no one who has better fans than Regis High School. No one. They were unbelievable. The students, the parents, they had over a thousand people at that game that they won the other night. And it was uh it was really fun to see Regis and Kevin Cullen going into the Catholic Basketball Hall of Fame you know, later in May, and he deserves it because he's done such a wonderful job over there at Regis as, as they are now the Class B uh, state champs, and they'll get to play again. And I, I'm assuming you probably want to talk about that later too, this Catholic PSAL matchup in two weeks. Yeah, I, I kind of know how that's going to turn out, but we, we, <laughs> there's, know, a, there's a lot of controversy going to the PSAL, so we're going to get to that as well. Trust me. And I want to ask you about how did you handle those situations where – you know, when some controversy was passed to your desk. Okay. Right? But yeah. I, w- I want to go back. I want to go back sure. a little bit. Yeah. Um, who introduced you to the game of basketball? Wow. Who introduced me to the game? Well, I'm going to tell like, he personally didn't introduce it to me, but he is a big reason why I ended up doing what I do. When I was in fourth grade at Brookside Elementary School, I was talking to my buddy Tommy Hall about Dr. J. You know, we probably saw him on Warner Wolf or something on Channel 2, some highlights the night before, because you didn't see a lot of that stuff. And I was talking in class, and my teacher, Mrs. Fontaine, yelled at me, and she said, if you want to talk about sports, Mr. Quick, then you should become a sportscaster. So I was like, okay. So probably the ga- I got excited about the game probably because of Dr. J. And I was talking in class and she yelled at me and I always put it in the back of my head and said, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to be a sportscaster one day. And that's, that's what happened. So Dr. J is the one who got me excited about it. Long Island guy, you know? Definitely. Definitely. Where where were you raised, Mike? Norwalk, Connecticut. And you know, who's from Norwalk, Connecticut, the greatest baton twirler of all time. (laughs) Number 23, Calvin Murphy. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Wow. Calvin would come back when when Norwalk would have a huge Memorial Day parade every year. And when he was off, even, you know, in the NBA, having a great career with the Rockets, he would come back on Memorial Day and he would lead the parade down Main Street, twirling the baton. He was the first guy in the parade. So that was really cool. He never forgot where he came from. Ever. I, I never knew that. I never knew he was a he was a great baton twirler. Oh, yeah. And you know this. 
our really good friend, Tom Kinchowski, and they have the big Kinchowski event on the 23rd in, at Bryant Park in, in the city. You know, they honor Tom and a bunch of coaches keeping his name alive. Tom always said that Calvin Murphy, pound for pound, was the best small player he ever saw, ever. That Dapper Dan tournament, I guess, yes. and lit it up, and they still talk about it. Yeah, the name, the, the approach to Newark High School is called Calvin Murphy Way now. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, how did you start to cover New York City sports? Like, how so, did we make that transition? Yeah. So, when I went to Sacred Heart University up there in Connecticut. You know, I always wanted to be in the media. And then these News 12s were kind of just getting started. And there was a News 12 in Norwalk, my hometown. And I went in there and did whatever I could. I started as a studio cameraman on a talk show, like a, a food show, a planting show, just to get my way in there. And then I started working with Dennis Buckman, the sports director, working like 90 hours a week, getting paid for 15 hours a week and loving every second of it. And it broke in that way. And then the big, the big moment, because that's like Fairfield County, Connecticut, the big moment was the old Coca-Cola High School Sports Weekly show that started in 86 on MSG Network. Greg Gumbel was the host, and they had, they had researchers and production assistants, and he would come in once a week and do the show, and they'd have people gather all the info for him, and they would get foot. They didn't have any shooters, so they would get footage from the local cable companies, and one night the producer... She lived in New Canaan. She came up to pick up the highlights in Norwalk, and I was cutting up the highlights for her. And she said, "Who does? Who shot all this?" I said, "I do." She goes, "Did you watch our? Do you watch our shows?" I said, "Yeah, I do." She goes, "What do you think?" I said, "I don't think you have enough video in them." She goes, "What?" I said, "Yeah, the other night you did something on Dana Eichenberg from Greenwich High School. She won over two thousand career points. She's going on to Penn State." I said, "You showed a picture of her." I said, "I had video. I have the balloons. I had the interview." She goes, "You're kidding. You want a job?" And that's how it started. Wow. Two weeks later. I started working on the show out of Stanford, Connecticut. And then three years after that, the show went away. And then Bob Bukowski was the president of MSG Network then. When it went away, he thought, you know what? There's something here that we need to continue. So I came and I would do like a 10-minute segment on the sports desk with Bob Page. Um, and then two years later, it turned into the half-hour show. You probably remember... It was the boss by IG Design High School Report on MSG Sports Desk. Yeah. And that's right when we started, like, 91, 92, 93. That's when we really started to get into it. And I said, you know, because on the old Coca-Cola High School Sports Week, the it wasn't a problem, but you only had a half hour. And our producer wanted to do all the sports. And in a half hour with five minutes of commercials, which means you have 25 minutes of content, you can't, because you're never going to grab an audience. So when I went to the garden, I said to Bob Bukowski and Joe Townley and Marty Brooks, I said, can I do it in football season? It's just football. They're like, do it however you want. And that's how we started to develop our brand because we just did football and then basketball came. We just did basketball. And then in 06, we started lacrosse. So I always thought less was more. And that's our audience was built and our PR was done by guys like you who loved it. Hey, you got to watch the show. Hey, you got to see this show. Hey, they talked about you on MSG. And that's how that's how it started. What an amazing, amazing story. That's I never knew all that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. Man. So what was it like covering all those star players during the 90s? You know, you was like right in the end of like Kenny Anderson, the beginning of so many players, the Felipe Lopez and all like that, that era, that yeah. era where there was so many All-Americans and McDonald All-Americans uh, coming out of the Catholic School League. It, it was an amazing time. It was the, it was the best, it was the best time. Um, the nineties into the early, like, so Kenny, you know, Kenny and Bobby Hurley Jr. and the great St. Anthony teams in the late nineties, um, I'll give you an, one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite stories of all time, believe it or not, and I wasn't even thinking about talking, it just popped in my head, Robert Phelps, who I love, okay, Nazareth High School. So Nazareth is playing for the State B Championship up in Glens Falls against Southampton. Remember Kenny Wood? Yes. Went to Richmond, was part of the Spiders' number 15 team, Seed, who upset Syracuse. 
So Kenny Anderson was getting his, you know, New York State player of the year. We're about to do the game. We're doing a pre-interview before the game. We're going to play it back at half. And Rob's in the layup line, get, you know, getting loose for Nazareth before they're going to play the game. And I'm out on the floor with Kenny. And Robert comes over to Kenny. He goes, yo, dude, you're good. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, you're good. So Kenny had 2,621 career points. Kenny Wood, I think, was 2,605 points coming in. He was averaging like 27 points a game. So now Kenny Anderson's record's on the line. Robert Phelps said, bro, don't worry about it. He'll never get it. He got eight points that night. Kenny walked out of there. He still had the record at 26-21. Robert Phelps is an incredibly – now, he had a great career at Providence. Yeah. But when you talk about great players in New York, vastly underrated. He should be talked about more. He really should. The great player. Big shout out to my brother, Rob Phelps. I was just on the phone with him yesterday. <laughs> he, he was the other person that I was about to mention early on yeah. that said you had a great impact on his career uh, and he wanted to say hello to you uh, as well. The hell of a coach. Yes. Oh, hell of a coach. Yeah. And yep. even a better person. Took the words right out of yep. my mouth. A better person. Yep. Took the words right out of my mouth. Now, with, with all that was going on during the Catholic School League, you had this coach who was my former point guard at Abraham Lincoln High School, Dwayne Tiny Morton, yeah. who battled the Catholic School League by himself, literally, with all the teams that he, he brought battled. He battled everybody by himself. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What What was it like during his time and, and all of the major things he accomplished? Because he just got inducted to the Hall of Fame um, recently, and I want to give a big shout-out to my brother, Tiny Morton, you know, he should be in the hall. Like, Tiny had his detractors, but I like Tiny. Tiny and I had a very interesting relationship because Tiny could manipulate the media in his own way, and I wouldn't take his crap, and he knew it. He knew it. And I think when – I think the moment where Tiny's like, you know, I'm just not going to be able to get over on this guy. They're playing at St. Francis College. Something happened in the game, and Tiny said, that's it, we're out of here. Like three minutes left in the game. I grabbed my cameraman. We met him midcourt, and we did an interview coming off the floor, and I was just pressing him, pressing him. I wouldn't let him get away. Just, Tiny, you can't do this. It's not good for the game. Da, 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 da. And um, we got some really good feedback. I'll tell you what, there was a bunch of Catholic League coaches who called me and said, hey, that was a great job not letting him off the hook like that. But Tiny, Tiny was the villain who embraced being the villain. He was underrated as a coach because his teams played as hard as anybody. And I remember early in his career, it used to drive me nuts, Pooh, when during games he would sit on the scorer's table. And I'm like, what are you doing? That's disrespectful to the game. You can't do that. You can't do that. So we would battle, but he he made it fun. And I'll tell you what, he had an athletic director who kept him in his spot too, Reed Ann. Like, you know, he could have run rough shot over a lot of people, not her. No way. So those were fun years, though. And I think you saw the change. Like, you know, everything was always Catholic, 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 Catholic. 06, 07, 08, you started seeing kids leave the Catholic schools. Lincoln, Jefferson, boys, they started leaving. And then the change that I think hurt New York City the most was then kids just started leaving New York City altogether. Yes. And there's not as many players as there used to be. But listen, Glenn, you know this. Back in the day, I could on a given Friday night 20 years ago, I could go to the 10th best game in New York City, Catholic or public. You know, take take the 10 best games, seven Catholic, three public, six, four, whatever. And in the 10th best game 20 years ago, you'd still see at least two Division One players in that 10th best game. You don't see that anymore. Don't see well, that. I think with, with the, you know, um, introduction of, the trans the uh transfer portal yeah. right and and that hurting kids a lot mm -hmm. um we do have a lot of young players coming up that are freshmen and sophomores and juniors that people aren't even seeing yet because you know the talent pool is just so spread out it it was it wasn't that many schools it's a lot more schools now mike yes, there is glenn let me ask you a question because i again i just saw him in the archdiocesan final when saint ray is just pummeled Stepping at, remind me again. I don't have my notes in front of me. Who was the little guard, the freshman on St. Ray's? Because he's the oh. next great player in New York City. Oh. 
Anderson Diaz. Great. Yeah, he's great. He is amazing. Yeah, Definitely the great. best freshman in New York City. Definitely yeah, the best. Friend, he, one of the he, best in the country. That game, like he looked like he was a senior in that game, even though he might weigh only 120 pounds. He, his composure in that game, like if you parachuted in there and didn't know who Boogie Flan was, you might have thought Boogie Flan was him. Right. Because that day he was so good. And and George's – Coach Lopez's scheme that day against Stepanak was terrific, considering, what, two, three weeks ago or before that, they had given up 100 points to Stepanak. I thought it was great. But I said to Coach Masseroni before the game today, I said, you know, every great team has one bad game. You just pray it's not in the last game of the year. So for them, no one's going to remember that they lost the Archdiocesan Championship against St. Raymond's. They'll remember that they won the city final. That's what they'll remember. No, that's that's very yeah. true. Yeah. And some some people believe that they did it just so they could get that loss in before it <laughs> happens later on, right? So well, I'll tell you this. I called some people at St. Francis Prep on my way home from Mount that day, and it's like, oh, boy, you guys, <laughs> for winning, you just lost. When they pummeled uh, Nazareth the night before – and then Stepanak loses, and now you get him in the semifinals, and you just kind of had an idea it was going to be a quick out for St. Francis. But I'll tell you what, he can coach too. Oh, my God. Yes. He really can. Uh, Jimmy Lynch, you're talking about. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah, he won my coach of the year last year. Good job. Definitely. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no he question. did that. So let, let me just run a few players that, that's really good, right? Yep. We have Connor Ego from Poly Prep. He's the junior. Okay. He can go. Um, we have Josh Powell from Malloy. I'm just talking about all the younger guys. Yep. I'm not going to hit yep. on the seniors. Halon Rollins, who played tonight with Nazareth, he didn't have the, the, the greatest of games. Mm -hmm. um, he's a junior. He will you be back. You can see he can play. You can see that. There's yes. no doubt. Yep. Yes. You have Connor Spratley from Jefferson, right? You have Asher Elson, 6'9", small forward from South Shore. Okay. He can go. Um, who else you got? You have um, Jada Swan from Thomas Jefferson. People say he, he's a, well, he's a six four guard, but out of everyone in the city, people label him as the next pro. Really, he is a guard six four. He's the best shot blocker in the city as a guard. Smooth as all molasses. Wow. Okay. Yes. Are they still involved? We're gonna to get to that because okay. that's that's the controversy that that been passed, you know, through my desk. Okay. Uh, of course, you got uh, Anderson Diaz. You got Amir Dockery from Eagle Brooklyn, freshman, okay. another freshman. I consider him the number two freshman in the city. Okay. He's the strong point guard for Eagle Academy. Tavia Scott from Brooklyn uh, Tech. He played on the JV because his dad wanted him to be. Coached by Elma Anderson, who coaches on the JV. Wow, okay. He won't be there next year, trust me, because he'll be starting point guard on, on the varsity team somewhere else because, okay, you know, I won't get into that. Well, you know he's getting coached, that's for sure, if you have EA coaching him. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, And we have it so many. Uh, We got Talib Martin of the Martin family, right? His brother, Kadib Martin, he was first team all Catholic league. Okay. But his younger brother, who's a freshman, he's going to be a player. Okay. Watch out for him. You got Kamari Wright. Kamari White from St. Raymond's, who's a sophomore. He had a 50-point game this season. Just imagine a mm. sophomore with a 50-point game mm. with Brandon Stores on your team. Mm. That's saying something. We got Sincere Falk. He's just a sophomore on South Shore. He's the starting point guard for South Shore. He's a, he's a dog. Right, so many. Richard Jackson uh, from Bishop Lachlan, PJ Singleton from Canarsie. These are all sophomores. Mm. These are all sophomores. Jamel Thomas, Magic Mel, sophomore. Whoa, right. whoa, hold on, wait a minute. That's not 33 son, is it? No, 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 no. I knew you talking about from Lincoln. No, 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 yeah. no. Because no. he's one of the most underrated players I ever covered, too. Yes, yes. Great player. Yep. Salute to my guy, saw him the other day at Tiny's uh, event. Um, you have uh, Jaziah Crawford from Holy Cross, another sophomore. You saw Josiah Jervis tonight. He mm -hmm. didn't have the game that he had against St. Francis, mm -hmm. but he's the player. Mm -hmm. And you got uh, Osama 
Uh, soccer, we call him Big O for St. Francis. Sophomore. Okay. He got to be the best sophomore in the city besides Jada Swan. So there's a, you know, I could go on and on and on. So the, the future looking bright for New York City. Good. Let's hope they all stay. You yes. Know? They don't leave. We, we, we definitely, uh, when I see these guys, I let them know that, look, yep. if you can make it New York, you can make it anywhere. 100%. Right? So listen, okay. What was the most controversial thing you had to cover? Uh, I'll tell you what. It's so funny. You're going to laugh when I say this. I thought when Ed Grzynski allowed Epiphany Prince to score 108 points, that was sinful. It was awful for Murray Bertram. So I had him on, and I went after him pretty good. Uh, Cause I just, I think the final score was like 131 to 29. I had such a major problem with that and everybody was embracing it. Oh, she had 108 points. No, 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 no. Score 30 in the city final. And that's big. You don't need a hundred. Anybody who scores 108 points in a game, unfortunately came against a bad school. Mm -hmm. So it means nothing. So that was the one that, but that was the one that I sunk my teeth to and went after it the most by far, which is, uh, all the boys' games I covered through the years, it ends up being a girls' game. That really bothered me. Really bothered me. Well, listen, I I'm going to break the ice on this one. Okay. So, during the Brooklyn Championship, the eve of the Brooklyn Championship, you had Thomas Jefferson supposed to face off against Eagle Academy. Mm hmm. The PSCO got a call from someone and said they need to check on Thomas Jefferson's players for eligibility status. Mm -hmm. The PSCO went in and saw that a player had felt that, well, a class wasn't in on the transcript, right? Mm -hmm. The player had passed the class, but it wasn't in the, the portal or whatever they checked. Mm -hmm. So they Declared Thomas Jefferson ineligible. South Shore got to play in the Brooklyn Championship. Who they play? They play Eagle Academy, last year's champion okay. from Brooklyn. Right? Okay, fine, all in dandy. We move on, right? Things mm -hmm. like that happen. Mm -hmm. um, there was an email sent out that stated that the player from Jefferson will be eligible after the Brooklyn championship going into the playoffs because he did pass the class. It just wasn't put in the transcript. <laughs> this is, it, it gets even crazier than this, Mike. <laughs> let, let me just finish. And then I, I want you to chime in. Yeah. Now we have the final four coming up. The final four it's supposed to be Jefferson playing against South shore Eagle Academy versus Brooklyn collegiate. PSL gets another call. So you got to check on Thomas Jefferson. So they went in. They found out that all the, this is according to, not saying the PSL told me this. This is according to my sources. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our sources. Mm -hmm. That Thomas Jefferson has some players that didn't have the 90% attendance rate. Mm hmm They went scouring, they went scouring, they couldn't find the grades. They found this. This happened on the eve of the Final Four. The same as the eve of the Brooklyn Championship. So mm -hmm. I had to put on the schedule that the first game was going to be canceled between Thomas Jefferson and South Shore, which is a huge rivalry, which mm -hmm. everyone wanted to see. Mm -hmm. It was the fourth game that they played during the year, and this was going to be the mm -hmm. mano mano, one of the best games of the year. It didn't happen. PSL suspended Thomas Jefferson for the year. They're out of the playoffs. Now, they the team that they beat in the playoffs, Stevenson, they beat them by 60. And Brooklyn, I mean, and Eagle Bronx, they beat them by 20. They will face each other to see who plays South Shore. Okay. Let's go even deeper than that. The athletic director from Jefferson was the gym teacher at South Shore. <laughs> you, you, this is, 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 this is
this is a mini documentary. This is <laughs> this is this is all the things that have been put on my <laughs> desk. And I I just want to know where, where all this going on. And now, now today, they don't have South Shore on the bracket. I don't know what's going on. I just had to find out. They have South Shore in the uh in the Elite Eight, mm -hmm. but they don't have them in the final four spot that would for Jeff, I mean for uh, Stevenson and Eagle Academy, the winner out of them would play South Shore. They they took that bracket away on South Shore. So I don't know if South Shore is gonna be playing. Oh my god. <laughs> this this could be a, a real soap opera or wow. a mini 30 for 30. Wow. See, so you know this is the first time I'm talking about it. And it's the first time I'm talking about it on yeah. the show. Here's the problem I have with it. If there were infractions committed, then they should be held accountable. Here's the issue I always have when people get turned in the night before, the day before, two days before they're supposed to play. Somebody knew this a while ago. So why are you hurting the kids on the eve of the game? Why are you affecting the entire makeup of the league because you held some type of grudge and thought you were going to pull a trump card at the 11th hour and said, I got them. It's not right. If, if Jefferson had infractions and you knew it, you should have turned them in when you knew it, not when you thought it would benefit you the most. So you look like you could tell all your guys, hey, see what I did? I got Jefferson out. Of I don't like it. If they did something wrong, they should be out. But if they were, if they did something wrong and it was a grudge that people went after them the night before, that's not good. That's not good. It's not good for the kids. It's no. not good for the game. And it's not good for the league. No, it's awful. It's awful. Now it's I awful. say, I say you, 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 if you want to penalize them, all right, you guys are not going to have any non-league games next year. Fine. Right? Uh -huh. Cool. But we, we need to let this go on. Yeah. Wow. Not good. Not good. I'm glad. I'm glad you you thought that. I, yeah. I you, you voiced your opinion, so I guess you would have handled it the same way because yeah. this yeah. came across my desk, and you know, um, coaches wanted to come on. I told her, listen, not tonight. I got I got the <laughs> legend on Mike quick, and, and they all just said, all right, cool, Mike coming on. Go ahead and do the show. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, it's just been weird uh as of late. And now you have uh the PSCL and the Captain School League playing March yeah. 24th and March 25th. Mm. You know, this is not a knock on anyone, but I do agree, you know, on the 25th hour, we can't pick can't pull a rug under the kids. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Somebody knew, somebody knew well in advance, and they were waiting for that moment, and they knew twice. Because they did it what in the uh, the Brooklyn playoffs? They they should have been disqualified then. You can't let them yeah. play and then go back. Uh -huh. And and now that we know that the athletic director for Jefferson, who worked at South Shore, she resigned. Wow, this is a thirty for thirty. <laughs> oh my God! You can't make this up. Listen, I I don't make the rules. I don't enforce the rules. Mm -hmm. I just report the news. That's it. That's it. Yep. Guys can't be mad because someone got to cover it. Why yep. not me? Yep. No doubt. All right. Yeah. So who were some of your favorite people to cover and interview? Like, let's let's talk about that uh, during that time of the height of New York City. My favorite like, interview? NXT. Like, yeah. my fa one of my favorite people. Like, I could give you Felipe, obviously. Elton Brand, obviously. But my favorite person, I love the way he played. And then afterwards talking to him because he was just a gem of a human being was Charlton Clark. I mm. love Charlton Clark from St. Ray's. Just absolutely loved him. I thought he was the nicest kid, terrific player, good college career. He was my, fa he was my favorite um, interview by far. I wish I could have spent more time with Kenny because he was just finishing yep. Anderson when I started. But Kenny did, I'll never forget, and for a senior in high school, this was crazy. We were doing our all-star team, and 
that was the year I think Malloy lost in the semifinals and Kenny missed two free throws. And like the newspapers, Anderson chokes or Anderson misses, you know, cost standards. And I always felt like in a high school football game, Pooh, there's nothing that I cringe more when a kid goes to hit an extra point to tie a game and he misses it late in the game. I just, I think as a parent, and I, I never show that. I'll just say they scored late, but so-and-so held on to win 21-20. Kenny came up to me. We were, t- I think the studio, I think we were in Times Square Studios in Times Square. And he said, you know, how come you never you know, took shots at me when I missed those two free throws or something like that. I said, Kenny, because I talk about you every week. It just gave me another opportunity to show somebody else scoring a basket that you didn't, that I could put in the highlights. He goes, wow, thanks. I thought that was incredible for a kid that was a senior in high school who just had that, that, that time to reflect like, wow, he didn't say that. And my whole thing was, I don't care if you're Kenny Anderson, Glenn Harding, Mike Quick, or, or Johnny Jones. I never wanted to make a kid feel bad in a highlight. He knows he missed it. Everybody there knows he missed it. I don't need to show the video of him missing it again. He knows it. So I'd rather show something positive. And that was, so that was fun. The, um, I'm trying to think like who, nobody's ever asked me that. They've always asked who are your favorite players, but favorite interviews. Charlton Clark was definitely at the top. I'll, I'll give you, you know, now, He was from Long Island, and he ended up going to St. John's and then transferred to Northwestern. Do you remember Timmy Doyle from St. Dominic's? Yeah. Timmy Doyle was a hysterical interview. He was – because he was his father. He was absolutely hysterical. You know, we're going to have to do this next year, and I'm going to have to go through the list of kids who were the great interviews. Now, there were kids that I went to do – interviews with that struggled dramatically and I would never want to put them on the spot. So if they struggled, I wouldn't use it on the show, but I would always call their coach, especially if they were very good players who were going to play in college and say, listen, if you want me to come to school and work with him, I would love to do that because he's going to have to learn how to do post game interviews and things of that nature. So I did do that often and believe it or not, not a lot of coaches took me up on it, which I thought was, I thought that was a mistake by coaches, especially for high level players you know, just to get to that next level, you're going to have to talk. So they never, not a lot of them took me up on that. You know, um, I'm trying to think, God, that's such a good question. I feel terrible because I'm not giving you. That's okay. That's I'm all right. trying to go through, I'm trying to go through names right now. Um, God, I'll think, keep going. And I'll, I'll think of some other guys because there were definitely some guys that, that could really talk that I really enjoy talking to. Now. I'm, I would love, I would love to, you know, sit down one day and and watch some of those vintage games. I know you have them. It's locked in your vault. Uh, I know what uh, your, what, what, not, what is your vault? That stuff was thrown away. Believe it or not. Oh, you serious? Yeah. No, I, man. I'll tell you what. If they still had that stuff, it'd be a great thing for the garden to show. People would watch that stuff twenty years later. What? Twenty five years later. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it, I think, when the when the, the garden was changed over, and then even back to the days of High School Weekly, because we were a freelance show, and our offices were up in Connecticut, and when they got rid of the shows, and then I came to the garden, they told me that those tapes were going to make its way to the garden, and they never did. Like, they just, when the people came in, they threw them out. So I made it out of there. I'll never forget it. I made it out of there with the Kenny Anderson KMOX shootout, the Christmas tournament with Jack Buck on the call. The one where you see Kenny come down, goes behind the back. Then later, just that, I made it out of there with that. I made it out of there with the 1989, 88-89 Alani Prep Classic in Hawaii, Malik Sealy, Tolentine, Autry and Reese as sophomores against Hurley Jr., Jerry Walker, Terry DeHair. I made it out. And if you remember, Tolentine won that game. Yes. So that was Malik's senior year. And the other guys, Hurley, Walker, DeHair, they were juniors. Because that was the only loss. They went 30-1 and that year, 32-0 and the next year. So that was a classic game. Wow. 
I, I, I've always said this too. People have asked if you had to pick a team based on high school and you could pick 10 players, you, you're the general manager of the team. You have to pick the team to go win. And everybody said, you know, they're like, they're going to think I'm going to say Kenny, Stefan, you know, and I'm going to. But my first pick, believe it or not, would be Jerry Walker from St. Anthony's, Jersey City. And here's why. If you remember Jerry when he went on to college and yep. played PJ, mm -hmm. Jerry at 6'7 could cover guys 7 feet or 6'3. Jerry Walker was a great player. Jerry Walker was an NFL tight end. He just didn't know it. He played he played basketball. J wow. Jerry Walker was an unbelievable basketball player. Yes. Un yes. Definitely. That's the best team that ever came through here, too, though. That 89 St. Anthony team. That that's the that's the best team that ever they'll be ne they'll never be. There hasn't been a team since, nor will there ever be another team like Hurley's Friars of 89. Never. Never. They were really good. Oh, oh, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Eagle Academy of the Bronx is wiping the floor with Stevenson, 53-38 in the third quarter. You called it. You called it. Uh, listen, uh, if I was those coaches, no disrespect, to Stevenson coach and Coach Rose from Eagle. But just if I was the coach, I would have to ask the players, do you want to play? Really? Right? Or or do we just sit out and let South Shore move on? Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's a, a, a bigger play at hand that I, I, I won't speak to you on air about. Because there's another part to this okay. that's, oh, we make the, the, this documentary so so juicy. I'm not even gonna let it out on air. Yeah. But okay, let, let's finish up. All right, Coach Hartstein. Mm -hmm. Tell me something that you remember from his coaching days that still stands out to you. A gentleman, you know, in that rough and tumble black and blue Brooklyn division. Always warm, always welcoming. You know, you're, I'm coming in there because, you know, Lincoln, Stevenson, Grady, those those were all those really good teams back then. And I'm I'm coming in from Fairfield County, Connecticut, and, you know, he just welcomes me in. Jack Ringle, same thing, just welcomes me in. And I just always watch the dynamic. I got to be honest, man. You're coming in there, and I was like, who is this guy, Ken Reeves from the White Shadow? Like, it was unbelievable. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Listen, I'm glad you said that. When I made Lincoln as a freshman, yeah, I told my mother, I was like, we was watching the White Shadow. I was like, this is my coach. <laughs> I said, this is my coach. I Honestly. It. I love it. I love it. Wow. And how much did, I'm hey, glad you said bro, that. Bro, how much did Ken Reeves care about his kids in the White? And the funny thing is, we're talking about this because I, I know you have a bunch of young guys that watch the show. They're like, what, huh? White Shadow? What's he talking about? What are Man. these guys talking about? One of, my one of the great TV shows. shows of all time. Of all time. Top five for me. Absolutely. I watched it all. I never, I never uh, went, missed the episode. And I, I, I really researched Carver High School to see if yeah. there really was a Carver <laughs> High School. So did I. So did I. Do you remember where Ken Reeves played his college basketball? No. In the beginning, they just say he played at Boston College. Yes, yes. Yep. Oh, yep. man, you're right. Yep. Boston yep. College. That's right. That's right. They did. Yeah. But that was Bobby. And I'll tell you what, you guys would have run through a wall for him and did run through walls for him. And he was very, I do remember how protective he was of Stefan. I do, like, he did not, he had to trust you if you were going to get near him. And he did a good job protecting, you know, Steph for sure. Definitely. Definitely. You know. Yeah, Steph mentioned that. Steph mentioned that when I interviewed him and said yep. because he saw Steph come up under his brothers, he was very protective of Steph. I there has been no player in the history of New York City who had more pressure on him to win, though. And the pressure was it was not on Steph, it was on his face. He took the burden that the, his older brothers didn't win. You know, they won. They just didn't win the city championship. And he took that pressure because if you remember that day, what, what was the final? 61-55 against Ropeson at the Garden. And um, that scene after that game 
So I had called that game. Matter of fact, you know who called that game with me that day? First game he called in New York. I'm going to blow your mind. Gus Johnson. Wow. That's that true. was the first game that Gus called for MSG Network. How about that? On TV. On TV. So when that game was over, you know, you go out there. We didn't have a sideline, so I did color. I go out to do, and I'm trying to get to Stefan. If you remember, the entire family is out on the floor, yeah. and everybody's crying, and I'm yelling, Steph, and Frank DeGrace, the producer, screaming at me in my headset. You got to get him. You got to get him. I'm like, Frank, I don't have any wire left. I can't get out there. He goes, then take your effing headsets off and go grab him. We got to get him before we – so all this stuff is going on. I finally grabbed Steph, boom, and – um and we got that interview. But that was uh, – because if you remember, in the semifinals at Riverbank, Steph did not play well. He did not play well in the semifinals. His teammates bailed him out that day because yeah. I think he was just so – the weight of getting to the garden. You know, and again, I say didn't play well. Didn't play well for his standards. Right. Anybody else would have been happy with it, not Steph. You know, can I give you a funny story about Steph? Yes, yes, yes. And it has to do with Steph and Sham God Wells. So it's President's Day, senior year. Those guys that weekend get named to the McDonald's All-American team. So <laughs> I get them on the phone, call them up. I did the show on Monday nights then before the half hour show started. So I wanted to get, I wanted to do interviews, kind of a quiet time, you know, low before the city playoffs start. So they come over. Steph obviously had played at the Garden twice before then as a sophomore and a junior. Sham God had never played there, ever. So we're on the three of us are on the floor. We bring out basketballs. They're dribbling around. Da, 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 da. We're kind of talking. Cameraman's out there. We're going to just kind of go back and forth. And Steph takes a couple shots. And Sham God from, you know, 21 feet elevates. He's going to take his first shot at the Garden. Pulls it down. Dribble, 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 lays it in. I'm like, yo, Sham, what's up? He goes, I had to make sure my first shot at the garden went down. Wow. <laughs> True story. True story. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know he changed his name to God Sham God, but it's yep. like Ron Artest. If I see Ron, it's I I can't help it. I have to call him Ron. You know what I mean? Meta, meta world peace. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'll tell you what, the we had some crazy announcements on our show. That was the craziest one of all time. Oh, my God. Oh, God. The backstories for Schiller coming after me. I didn't talk to Frischilla for six months. He was, oh, my God. He thought he was going to lose him. Ronnie Rutledge is like, sit tight, Mike. You're going to be fine. Daily News catches wind of it. There's this huge article written about the war that Fran and I are having. Ron Artest comes on the show, announces he goes to St. John's afterwards. You know, there's no cell phones or anything. So then we bring Ronnie upstairs to the press room. There's like 30, 35 press guys upstairs at the garden. So we do the show on the fourth floor, come up to the fifth floor. A call comes into the press room. It's Fran Fraschilla. Somebody says, Mike, Fran Fraschilla wants to talk to you. I can't tell you what I said on this show right here, but I can promise you this. I didn't take the call. <laughs> I didn't talk to him for six months. Wow. And I love Fran. What was the beef, if you don't mind sharing? What was the... He was he was upset because he thought that if the if the interview was delayed, the announcement was delayed anymore. I never picked the date of the announcement. All I did was I went to Ron and said, look, and Bill Abler, look, here's the deal. We have Nixon Ranger games on such and such. And we did the show on Monday nights back then on such and such nights. OK, so here are the dates where there are no games. No games guarantee you a time slot because if a Knicks game goes to overtime, Ranger game goes to overtime, it can push back. I said, here are the three dates in March and April that there's no live events on Monday night. And Ron chose it. And Fran was upset because he said that I was going to affect that other schools were going to get in there and get Ron. And it, it was, oh, it was crazy behind the scenes, man, to the point where I was almost like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we shouldn't do it because I was so worried. But Ron Rutledge said, Mike, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. And it ended up just being an unbelievable night for St. John's because the feature, the announcement. I mean, those nights when we when uh, Shaheen Holloway announced, Chris Sims for football, Ron Artest, it was, those were big nights 
at MSG. Like that, that created a buzz, you know, inside the whole network. People, even though you think of pro sports, when we did those high school announcements, the network would get excited. The 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 big shots at the network would get excited too. So that was really cool. But yeah, that was a that was a wild time. That was about a four and a five week run where it's like, oh my God. And he did it. And Six months later, we get together. Fran and I went out to Keene Steakhouse on 36th Street. We put it behind us, and off we went, you know. Let bygone be bygone. Yep. yep. Oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Breaking news, breaking news. Salute to Coach James Moore and Stevenson. Now down six with 648 left to go. Wow. Things are slowly changing, Mike. Where are they playing those games? They're playing at Queens College right now. Okay. Oh, there you go. Jackie's alma mater. Yeah. They, they said, you know, they wanted me to pull up. I'm like, ah, I got the legend tonight. <laughs> Give me the scores. So that's what people just usually just sit in the scores. Good. It's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. Good, good, so good. he said, uh, Sports Desk was my show with Bob Page. Who said that? Uh, Eric McRae. Okay. <laughs> he said, uh, Ron was drunk during that interview. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just let it all hang out tonight. They let oh it all hang out gosh. tonight. I'll tell you what, it was uh, the greatest, he's the greatest competitor I've ever covered. No doubt. And and not one, And this is the whole thing. If somebody threw a beer bottle or a soda at you, we'd all go into the stands. He just hit the wrong guy. Yes. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. that, that was it. That was it. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge Ron Artest fan. His, his greatest attribute was his greatest detriment. He competed so hard, sometimes he didn't know how to turn it off at times. But God, he could play. He's another one who would have been an unbelievable football player. Yeah, and that's the funny thing about Kinchowski. He always used to say to me, will you stop with your football? But I'm like, Tom, I go to these games. I see these kids sitting on the bench. You know, you got a 6'6 six, six kid sitting on the bench who can't make a layup. But then when he goes to get a rebound, he'll almost pop the basketball. He's so strong. I said, that's a defensive end. That's an outside linebacker. That's a tight end. You know, kids had a better chance getting out of New York City, northern New Jersey, Hudson County by playing football. than ba There's more opportunities in football than basketball. So Tom and I always used to always used to battle about that. But I'll tell you what, I miss him. You know, being up there today, going to games at Malloy. You know, I always said when Bob Shepard passed away, that was the biggest loss in the history of Yankee Stadium. The biggest loss in high school basketball. You know, obviously Coach Curran passing on, Coach Ringel. But when 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 Tom Kinchowski passed on, part of New York City basketball passed on with him. It did. It really did. Definitely. He, he was a great man. And, you know, uh, shoes is hard to fill, man. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. We got Delbert Prince in the building. He said, I used to see Mike Quick at those uh, Grady versus Lincoln games. And Delbert, he wrote the history of Coney Island basketball. Uh, you should send them out, uh, Delbert. You should send these to Mike. I think he will enjoy them. Oh, I would love that. Uh, it was the 1980s to 1990s, uh, 1970s to 1990s, 1980s, and then he did a comic book <laughs> with Isaiah and Steph on the front. And that I could be it. any Marbury, right, with the number three. Uh, yeah, I'm man. looking for a new book to read. I just finished Blood at the Garden, the years of the 90s with the Knicks. I'll tell you what, for all your fans that, you know, love basketball, that's I'm not a great book reader. I flew through that thing. It was an unbelievable book. Blood in the Garden. So listen, when they said basketball players, you know, are dumb jocks, here we go, right? Khalid Green, free game, right? Yeah. This yeah. is his book. We got Terrence Munch Williams, who's the head of PSA. Yeah. Our PSA. I have that book. Yes. Yep. Yep. Salute yep. to my guy Munt. I saw him today. Um, we have Dr. Laura Mealy. Remember Laura Mealy from Christ the King? She used to play for Christ the King. She was the first ladies, Mr. Bass. She was the first girls, Mr. Bass, Miss Basketball in New York State. She played for Christ the King. When was that? And Vinny Canizero just passed away. Too. I, think in 19, I think in 1989 she won it. Okay, so I was just getting started then with the boys, so I probably hadn't started covering the girls yet. Yep, this is Laura Milley's book, The Psyche yeah. of the Injured Athlete. And then we have uh, Brian Brown, the Buckeye. Brian Brown. Yeah, yeah. Yep, remember him? I do. Yep, yep. 
Uh, we got TJ uh, Sherrod, who played for Robeson and okay. used to coach at Robeson. And you're like a library over there. Bro. They, they, they sent me all of these things, man. Right? Then we got Jared Lockhart, right? Okay. Cheers to Fizz. Remember Jared Lockhart? Oh, yeah. Played at Mount St. Michael's for Tommy Frere. Yep. Tamel Murphy, Poetry in Motion. Wow. These all done by ball players. Family Business, Tracy Leonard Jameson. He played for Lincoln. Wow. Okay. And then we have Nikki McCrimmons, Queen of Harlem. Yeah. So, look. New York City, we don't do it on the ball court. We do it in the classroom, too. There you go, buddy. No doubt. All right, before I get you out of here, Mike, I would like to go through a top five, and then we can get you out of here. And then, yep. listen, whenever you want to come on. I, oh, you thank know, you, buddy. This has been fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate fun. you. Yeah. For sure. So we can we do that quick top five real quick? Sure, let's hit it. All right. Top five. Top five. All right. No in particular order. Uh, what would be your top five high school players from New York City? From New York City, just New York City. They had to play in New York City. That's right. The official home for New York City basketball. That's all we cover oh, is New York God. City. Because usually I do it with tri state. All right. So it's going to be Kenny one. Uh huh. Step two. Lamar three, who had more talent than both of those guys. Lamar, Lamar who? Lamar Odom. Oh, Lamar Odom. Woo. That's that's saying a lot, Mike. Lamar Odom. Other than Tim Thomas, I thought Lamar Odom was the best basketball player I ever covered. Um. Oh my God. Let's see. Uh, you know who I'm gonna put on that team? Jamal Mashburn has to be on that team. Has to be, has to be. Um, I still remember him in the in the city final in '90. Cardinal Hayes, those maroon and you know uh, gold uniforms. He had those lime green bicycle shorts underneath them. And the funny thing is, you remember that he wasn't that heavily recruited out of Kentucky and St. John's. He was a late bloomer. Um, wow. Um, God. Osama reminds me of Mars Byrne. Osama from uh, St. Francis Prep. If he gets the handle, that would be the next yeah. Mass Byrne. Yep. Um, I know. He, he's another football player. We, we did, yeah. He did play football as a friend. I'll tell you this. If you wanted a guy to hit a huge shot, I think he's the purest shooter out of New York City that I've ever covered. Not the best scorer, purest shooter, Khalid Reeves. Yes. Cliff groups. Got you. Um, this is tough, so I don't want to. Um... This is why I call it the top five, Mike. It's always the toughest question of the show. I'll give you a guy who I'm going to bring. See, I'll tell you what. Jamel Thomas, I, put, I, I see it's hard. It's hard. I'll give you a guy because every team, that's why I like with Jerry Walker, every team I want an enforcer on the team. You know who my enforcer would be? And again, not a guy that scored a lot. Yep. But as a coach, you watch what he did. Remember um, Carl Beckett? Yes. Yes. Great. You know, I got I to gotta put, I got to put um, Robert Fe Jeez, this is a tough one, Pooh. Because I mean. Top five. Top five. All top right, hold five. On. Let me just, let me get a little cheat sheet going. Here. There you go. There you go. Me, there you let go. Let me just, I, Look, I have to do it. because I, I was, tell people, this is the toughest part of the show. And I. Uh, of course, I I, I I like to you know. And only up guys that I saw. Oh Jesus! How do you leave How do you leave Malik Seely off the team? Ooh. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and again, I will I will preface this, and I've always said it, and I'll say it till the day that they put six feet of dirt on top of me. He is not the best player I ever covered. He's up there. He's not the best. But the most exciting player I've ever covered was Kareem Reed. Most exciting. Gotcha. Famous. I it's it, God. Let me just keep going through here. It's uh, um. Wow. Remember how tough Anthony? I mean, how I, you got to have Ron Artest on the team? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's 
God, it's tough. It's 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 really really tough. I mean, God, Kenny Satterfield was great. I mean, I, how Quincy Doobie? Like, wh how do how don't I get Quincy Doobie on the team? Like, Anderson Diaz mentor is Kenny Satterfield. Kenny Satterfield was so good. Yes. Kenny Sat, it, I, man, it is. That's a really. I mean, the easy thing is say, let me take five guards and we'll just run everybody out of the gym. But you can't do that. Like when I pick teams, it's always kind of like a by position team. Yeah. Um, that's a t wow. Give me your five. Top five high school players from New York. It's Pearl Washington. I never saw Pearl in person, so I can't pick. Okay. Him. Okay. Yep. yep. Pearl Washington. Kenny Anderson, Stephon Marbury. It's hard. No, I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it. <laughs> I'm going to get through it. Even though he only played two years of high school basketball, Lloyd Daniels. I never saw Lloyd. I wish I did. No. I wish I did. Yeah. Tell you. Tell yeah. you. Well, we was a freshman. Me and Lloyd was freshmen together. Mm hmm he gave us 29. Mm. And you know who was holding him? Kenny Parker, who was the brother of rap legend Karis One, Christopher Parker. And he held him to 29. Kenny Parker, DJ Kenny Parker, who's a legendary DJ right now, played yeah. for Abraham Lincoln. He was a senior. And Lloyd killed us for 29. He is the only player in basketball history that I've seen have two men cover him the full lift of the court when he was playing point guard for that. <laughs> He's some what a character. He I've is. seen I've seen people trap people, but I've never seen two people cover one person the whole game. I tell you, you're a really good show host because you still haven't gotten the number five yet. You're buying time. I see what you're doing. Oh no, not not at all, <laughs> not at all, not at all, and. The other one I'm going to put on there because I think he's the, the greatest travesty in not only New York City basketball, but in Abraham Lincoln history, Bernard Mitchell, my teammate. Okay. He's one of the greatest basketball players that never got his just due. He mm -hmm. never played college basketball. He was our leading scorer during that mm -hmm. 1986 championship run. Okay. And he killed Everyone from Joe Green, you name it, Kenny yeah. Anderson and Malloy, Arnold Bernard and uh, Long Island Lutheran. Mm. And everybody was trying to figure out who is this kid. Mm. He killed them all. And of course, you you could have named, I could name all the top guys, but he's my guy. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Yeah. So. And it, and, and it changes all the time, of oh, course. Of course it does. It got to change all the time. Yeah. All right. Top five high schools, New York City. High school programs, let's say that. Through the years? Yes, that you know about, that you cover. Right. Do you count Mount Vernon as New York City? I count them as New York. Because even though I said New York City, yeah. we could talk. If they're in New York, we could talk about them. Because I okay. had Coach Samino on the show as well. Yeah. Yep. Great program. Yeah, they're going to be, if you count them, New York City, they're going to be in my top five. Got you. Uh, you know, if we did the, if we did this show, you know, eight years ago, Lincoln would definitely be in the top five, but they've just fallen off. Um, But we're talking about in the history now, so they in still. The history. See, I but it's funny because I always say this. I only base my history on teams or people that I've seen. So. You know, I'm not going to throw Commerce High at you. You know what I mean? I'm not going to throw DeWitt Clinton at you. Yeah, yeah. You um, said Commerce High. People yeah. don't have no idea yeah. what you're talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. I do, though. Yes. Um, oh, man, I'll tell you, Johnny Mathis, what he did in all those years at Kennedy should not be overlooked. Definitely. Um, I had him on a show as well before yeah. he passed away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a gentleman. Oh, yes. my God. Uh, all right, let's just do it this way. All right, let's start. Let's start in the Catholic League. So, w when you think the Catholic League, 
you're always going to think the tradition of Archbishop Malloy. Have they fallen off? Yes. But, oh my God, do you put them right now as a top five? I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. I'm going to put St. Raymond's as a top five. Absolutely. Definitely. What Gary DeCesar did there and then Antigua after that. And George, George is always there. He's going to get, he's going to get one next year. George might win it next year at St. Ray's. Um, you know, of late, you have to put Stepanak in there. Like Stepanak's the new Christ the King. They are, but ha they haven't done it long enough. But that's what that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if, if you're going to put, well, we talk about the history of it. Yeah, right? All right, so history, uh, and in, your history in time. In well, okay, they're now closed. But Rice, even though Rice is closed, I'd still put Rice right up there at the top. I didn't have enough of Talentine. I had three years of Talentine before they closed, so I can't put them there. I will put Rice. I'll put St. Raymond's. I'll put Lincoln. I'll put Christ the King. Who's my fifth? <clears throat> Is it Bishop Lachlan? I mean, Bishop was there, but they never won. They never won. Um, Zavarian, I mean, not... Very good, not legendary. You know, I, I'm going to have to put, because of Coach Curran and the history of the program, I'm going to have to put Malloy in the top five. I'm going to have to. In the city, it's... it's Lincoln, ha Lincoln has to be in it. They have to be. I mean, they just... So much of my career... I mean, think about it. I went from 88 to 2016 and Lincoln was relevant every single year. Yeah. Every single year. At Lincoln's in it. They're in mine. Yeah, they'd have they'd have to be. They would have to be. You know. Um you got one more though. Okay, one more. So it's Rice, St. Raymond's, Lincoln, Christ the King. God, do I go with Malloy? I can't put I can't put Stepanak there yet. Uh, huh. Rice, CK, St. Raymond's, Malloy, Rice, CK, Raymond's, Malloy, and Lincoln. Those are the five. I can't put Jefferson there. I South Shore started to get good when I was done kind yeah. of covering it. Yeah. Um, Grady had a good run. They're not top five legendary. No. Stevenson kind of was fading by the time I got there. So Malloy's your fifth? And Malloy's going to be my fifth. People are going to argue that one. They're going to argue that. But based on my, if you're looking at my 36 years, Malloy, you know, they've struggled the last three years. They played in the city title, what, in 2019? So from, from 1988, 87, 88 to 2019, Malloy was relevant. Now, again, they didn't win it. I think the last time they won it was, what, 86? Kenny's freshman year? Was that it? Uh, excuse me. Uh, hello? Excuse me? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> we knocked them out. In 86? We knocked them out, Glen Falls. Well, that's Federation. They won the city title. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Suck that <Yeah>. whistle back. <laughs> all right, all right. You, you got it. You got it. What about boys? Boys was, boys was, they won five. They won five city. You know, Ruth did an unbelievable job there with Ruth that Lovelace, one. Yeah. Huh, Elma, yeah. You know what? That, that's a good job. I, I'm going to, you know what? Based on my run, I will put boys ahead of Beloy. I will. I will. They won championships when yes. I was doing this. Yes. They did. I never saw Archbishop Beloy win a championship. Right. Because I started doing it in 87, and I think, I'm just looking at the book right here, I think, yeah, their last championship, so Kenny was a freshman and a sophomore, their last title was 87. So I saw them win the 87 title, but then I saw boys win five. You're right. Yeah. No, boys, that's a great call, Who Boys at number five. Yep. So what about you? See, I like because you're really good at this. What about you? Top five programs? Yeah. 
Lincoln, Boys, Rice, Christ the King. And I want to say St. Ray's. It's got to be because it, in my span, St. Ray's 91, St. Ray's 93, St. Ray's 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004, 2012. Yeah, and they produce a lot of McDonald's All Americans, so you got to put them. The, they, the they're in. in St. Ray's is in there. Yeah, they're definitely. in my top five. No, definitely. No, they'll probably be at three. Rice is going to be at one. I would put Rice. I would put Rice just because the whole thing, too, when Felipe came through there, that brought Rice to a legendary status yeah. as far as high school. Just like, you know, the, the Marbury brothers were there, but when, you know, Steph got there, that changed, that changed every that changed everything. Everything. When you're getting on world news tonight and stuff like that, your program's going to a different place. He was on Charlie Rose. We talked about this. Who the hell is on Charlie Rose? I know. Like, I know. No, no doubt. No. Yeah. All right. Last one. Last yeah. one. Yeah. Last one. Top five players. Players, not high school players. We talk about in general. Top five players in New York City history. See, again, I can only base it on guys that I saw. Yep. Um, I would have loved to have seen – I'm drawing a blank. You just mentioned him. Um, from boys. Why am I drawing a blank? Uh, Pearl Washington. I would have loved to – now, I watched Pearl at Syracuse, obviously, but I never, I never got to see him in person in high school. He had just finished high school, you know, before I got there. And they never won the championship. They never won the championship with crazy. Pearl. They never won the championship with Ed Davida. It's it's crazy. It's nuts. I would have loved to. Obviously, I would have loved to have seen Lou Alcindor. I mean, there's no, there's no. You know, I would have loved to have seen. Um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. Um, I would have loved to have seen Ernie Grunfeld. Oh yes, yes. And I would have loved to have seen um, Bernie. Um, Oh my Bernard God. King, Albert I would King. Have, yes, I would have loved to have seen them. Like, you know, there's guys that you hear about and stuff like that. There's still something so magical when every once in a while you're seeing a story, they're doing it on Kareem and they flash back and they show that black and white footage of him at Power Memorial. Yeah. Like, that's really cool. Like, that stuff is really, really cool. So, I mean, those are guys that I wish I could have seen played. But I'll 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 settle for the ones that I got to see play because I'll tell you what, Pooh, you mentioned it earlier. I got to see great players, not good players, great players. I got to meet great people. I got to meet great coaches. I got to watch games in unbelievable environments. But when everybody says, "Well, your favorite sport is football," and I'm going to tell you right now, New York City football is heading in another direction. Because the basketball, as you said it, you said it a couple of times, the basketball has gotten better again in New York. It's not what it was. I don't think it'll ever be what it was. But New York City football has gone to a place that I don't think anybody thought it could go to. And New York City football? Oh, New York City football's got players. Now, Big what time. made you get into the football? Was you original a football guy? Yeah, see, everybody thought when I came, because you're at the Garden, everybody thinks it's basketball. I really, really like basketball. I love football. And again, I got really lucky when I came to the Garden because New York City basketball, New Jersey basketball was starting to get really good at that point. And the, the football, nobody knew how good the football was in New Jersey except the college recruiters. And then we opened up people's eyes to it. In the 2009 NFL draft, Seven of the top 32 guys in the first round were kids that we covered in high school. Five of them, we had Mike for sound on their shoulder pads during games when wow. they were in high school. So it's um, the football thing. I, I think, you know, when they took our show off the air, I think one of the reasons we were able to get a lot of sponsorship back to help us was because of the football, the way we did the football. And, um, yeah, I love, I, I love football. That's why – when I go to these basketball games, I look at kids and be like, he should be playing football. He should be playing football. Like there's um, like what I'll tell you right now. Now he's going to be a great basketball player. There's no doubt about it. But the kid Rollins today, Rollins would be an unbelievable outside linebacker because he's not, he's got some, he's got some meat on those bones. There's no question about it. That's a strong kid. 
you know, so, but he's, he's got a great basketball future, but I always go to high school basketball games trying to find like, who's the next good football player out here. That's awesome. And, and tell everybody where you do your football show. So we do it on ESPN radio Saturday mornings, I'm kind of going back and forth. Not sure if I'll be 60 in April. It's like, it's a blast to do it, but you're getting up at 10 or three every Saturday morning. You're getting home from games at midnight. You're trying to go about it the best way you can. I'm trying to read as much as I can. Plus, I, I have the full-time job, you know, working with Lantech. Marty Lyons, a former Jets great, brought me in there. So we're building stadiums and fields. You know, we build a lot of, for a lot of the, uh, we're doing Stepanak right now as we speak. And, uh, you know, a lot of the old people that I worked with, you know, the old schools and everything, I've continued those relationships. And, um, you know, when they need fields and bleachers and press boxes and lights, hey, Mike, what can you do? So even though I'm not, in touch with the game the way I was on a coverage side, I'm still in touch with the people. And that's what you remember the most. You forget the scores. You never forget the people. Well, well we never going to forget you, Mike. I'm going to tell no, you that. Thank man. you. Uh, thank you. Listen, you've been a staple uh, in New York City. You're definitely someone that's, you know, uh, helped solidify the culture of New York City. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Glenn. This this was a lot of fun. It was great to see you at the game earlier today. Uh, good. I, I, it's funny. I say to end the basketball season because it's weird. There's still another game, but there's no federation tournament. So that's kind of that's, that's kind of strange. So we'll see how that crazy. works out. Hopefully, it works out well in two weeks. It would actually be pretty cool. Like back in the days when I first started coming up, you know, they'd play the Metro Bowl, like in football and and baseball and stuff like that. I don't know if they did it in. I don't remember it in basketball, but right. It would. It, it, let's hope it works because it would be. It would be cool. The one thing that kind of stinks though is that it's a two-week wait now for Catholic schools to have to play it. The PSAL championships would be when next weekend. Yeah. Yes, no, next Friday. Next Friday. Next Friday. That's yes. a tough thing. You know, your season end now. You got. Oops. Wait a minute. You know, and so, you know, now you're gonna get some guys. I know, like the Regis team has some guys. They're playing golf. They're on the golf team. They're on the baseball team. So. Let's see if it works. It'll be good. It would be nice somehow if they could squeeze it up and make it a little tighter so maybe the both seasons end the same time so they could play a week later. But, hey, you know what? you got to start somewhere, right, buddy? Yes, yes. Listen, I, I've gotten so many uh, compliments and uh, some references. You know, uh, I was on a uh, phone with my guy last night, and he was just, like, saying to me, you know, Yo, you you really gotta embrace this, man. You having Mike Quick on and not realizing like you're kind of the new Mike Quick, or you're the new Tarkovsky. The way you write about the kids, or the new Bill yeah. Travis, and it's like that's it's, who broke me into the business, Bill Travis. Bill Travis. All these people, like, and people don't realize. You know, I got a chance to 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 see you guys and take bits and pieces mm -hmm. of what you bought because you know the kids don't have anything right now to give them any kind of coverage. And things like that and you help so many players mike you help change so many lives and kids lives you have no idea you gave them a chance to speak learn how to speak in front of the camera so when they got to college they knew how to do interviews and it was because of you that was fun i'll give you a quick bill travers story so he's teaching me when i come to coca-cola high school sports week and i'll never forget this he goes okay um, you know, Tallentine High School, and da, 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 da. and then he all of a sudden breaks into Tottenville High School. I'm like, wait a minute, are those the same schools? He goes, no, Tottenville, you're going to have to know for baseball and football. He goes, Tallentine, you're going to have to know for basketball. I'm like, Bill, how am I ever going to remember the names of these schools? Like, this was all so the Tottenville Tallentine thing was kind of my indoctrination into New York, and I'm like, how am I ever going to learn this? Like, this is going to be impossible. And uh, that was part of the fun, learning the boroughs, learning the schools, who was good, you know. Um, th that Travers was a huge, huge help for getting me on the right path, for teaching me New York, no doubt about it. Yeah, rest in peace, Bill Travers. Yeah. Rest in peace, Tom Kuchowski. Absolutely. And we're glad you're still here with us, Mike. Uh, last you. one, because, you know, uh, Olande Bethany. I know I'm killing your name right now, but uh, they said, uh, what do you think of uh, Sebastian Telfair as a high school player? He had more charisma than any kid ever on the court. That smile got him all that Adidas money. He Listen, he was a great player. He was a great player. Was he ready? 
you know, to jump to the league as quickly as he did? Absolutely not. But he beat the system. I just wish, you know, things worked out a little bit better, you know, on the back end. I, I know he's gotten, you know, a little bit of trouble along the way. But he, you know, when you asked me before about interviews, he's right up there. Yeah, he has so he much charisma. Was, You're right. Oh, my God. His charisma was – I always used to tell him, just keep smiling, man. Just keep smiling. He was – he was an attraction. There was no doubt about it. Sebastian was definitely an attraction. Always got excited to go watch those Lincoln games with Sebastian. Really, really made it a lot of fun. Made it, it was, it was a show. You know, when games become a show, that means there's somebody in the game who's a showman, and he was a showman, no doubt. And, and we're going to give a big salute to his big brother, Jamel Thomas, for getting him ready oh, for yeah. the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great player, Jamel. Great player. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. D. I appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I want to share something with you. And this was from uh, NF, uh, HS Network mm -hmm. uh, when I went to the uh, Long Island Games yesterday. And salute to my guy, Larry, man. This, this, It just means a lot to me that someone uh, would do this. So I'm going to put this on the screen, share the screen real quick. Everybody can see that. And this is my guy. This is my partner who I do high school weekly with. My <laughs> guy, Brian. Riker. Yeah, Riker. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's Saw my guy today. right there. Yep, saw him today. Yep, so this is what they did. Uh... And back here at Farmer the State College, just wanted to give a quick shout-out to that man right there, Mr. Basketball Heads, Glenn Poo Harding, um, a very knowledgeable basketball insider who covers mainly city basketball, but uh, was a... Uh, is, is they out here in Long Island? He could have been actually out at the PSCL semifinals this afternoon at Queens College, but decided to come here to watch the Long Island Championships. And he's he's seen three good games so far here, Robert. It's just and he's been sitting around just watching. And uh, big shout out to him. He's uh, promotes his uh, website on Instagram, Basketball Heads with a Z. That's important to know. And he's a very knowledgeable, guy, very nice guy. I've seen him around the block all over the city. And nice stuff for him to come out to Long Island. So glad to have him here. And he certainly picked the right games. That's cool. That's a good job by them. That's a really man, good job. Man. Hey, look, Mike, if I could do half the job that you've done, oh, um, I, I'm fine. No, no. You you came on the show burning up and on fire. So, you know, <laughs> man, to, to sit back and just to have a conversation with you and hear these great stories, it means a lot. And I and I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. You can come on anytime. I invite Thank you on. Listen. Pool, I got some things to share. If you want to ask you about some new players, whatever you want to do, my door is always open. Thank you, buddy. I, I really enjoyed this. I apologize for it taking so long. I know we've been trying to do this for a while. And then the whole technical thing, trying to get on the show. But I, I really enjoyed taking a walk down memory lane. I really did. But that top five, that's tough, man. I'm going to have to have a team with 10, and we're going to platoon the hell out of you. And we're going to come at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, before you get out here, I'll say this. Like I said, Eagle Academy beat Stevenson 7361. Okay. All right, Mike, listen, uh, I'll definitely be in contact. Great. And, you know, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Tell you Jackie I said thank you again, and you God bless her. All right? You're the man. Thanks, Glenn. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, thank you. See ya. All right. Wow, listen, y'all have no idea how geeked I am right now, right? And I tell you guys, because a lot of you guys and girls out there think, or men and women think that these interviews just happen. No, these things take years, sometimes months to, you know, to make happen. And I thank uh, Mike Quick for being patient and, and keeping me in his mind just to even come on the show and, you know, share some of these great stories. Right, he's still around. Right, we still have the great ones still around. We lost many, but it's man, God bless. We have Mike still around doing this thing on a football end. But listen, you young guys, take notes, right? Because if we want to sustain what New York City basketball is about, we got to make sure we do it on and off the court. It's a combination. And as we heard from Mike, that y'all got some big shoes to fill. It's no hate on a new generation, but we got to get back to the basics. Got to get back to what makes us great. And I think we're on the right path for that. 
So to all my basketball heads out there, I'll say salute and thank you. Make sure if you haven't done so, subscribe, subscribe to the channel, share the content, share the content, share the content. That's all I ask you. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for all the shows. And we're about to get out of here. Appreciate you, our black Eric Kennedy. Man, man, we 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 done touch that. We're not gonna go back there, man, because the end of the show, I'm about to get out of here. I am your host. Glenn, Pooh, Harding, and you've been watching Basketball Heads Live, the official home for New York City basketball. And y'all know what we do around this time. Peace.